Oh, so the, uh, today, uh, I'd like to talk about the Heisenberg uncertainty relation revisited. So you may ask, you know, this is a such an old subject, so uh, such a new. Uh, the, uh, my comment is related on the, uh, about one and a half years ago, uh, there was an experiment performed at uh, Vienna. And uh, they suggested, or they questioned the naive form of the Heisenberg type uncertainty relation. Namely, uh, if you measure something, you have an error. Then you disturb the subject, so error disturbance relation. And that was a question. So I'm going to explain that the, uh, actually, the, and also the uh, textbook uncertainty relation, so called uh, Kennard and Robertson relation, namely delta x, delta p, bigger than one half h bar, okay? That is that one. And uh, the, therefore, those authors uh, the, uh, distinguished these two uncertainty relations, namely the uh, Kennard type or textbook uncertainty relation and uh, the uh, Heisenberg type uh, so-called Gedanken experiment. But uh, I'm going to explain that actually that there are no distinction. Actually, Robertson's relation explains everything. Okay? Uh, that's what I'm going to explain. <coughs> and uh, although the professor Dyson may not be here, but uh, uh, this is, I know, the, uh, this the, uh, top specialist. And, uh, uh, among the uh, essays, he, Professor Lyson wrote many essays. One of the essays I found very interesting and influenced is that he emphasized the unfashionable physics or maybe unfashionable subject in physics, maybe. And uh, he encouraged uh, young people in particular uh, to do something unfashionable. He said, fashionable. Okay. So I'm not sure about this, maybe one of the unfashionable uh, subjects, and all the subjects. <coughs> and in fact, the, uh, when I submitted this paper uh, to Physical Review A, the editor wrote to me immediately that the you know, uncertainty relation such an old subject and nobody is working on, so that's not suitable for Physical Review A. So they rejected. So I explained to them that that's not the case. There are some experiment going on. Okay. Then they, they agreed to listen to the opinion of Revali. Then after Revali, now editor again wrote to me. And he said that maybe you should talk to the uh, person in charge of the public relations at your laboratory and may, have, may consider the press release or like that. So <laughs> anyhow, so this is a you know, very unfashionable old subject, but uh, some fashionable aspects included. Okay. That's my uh, talk. So in the uh, plan of my talk is a uh, uh, review of past formulations. And then the, uh, that experiment of Vienna is mainly related to Ozawa's proposal. So I'm briefly explaining what happened. And essentially what they found is a uh, failure of naive Heisenberg type uncertainty relation. And then I may explain there are several alternatives to naive one, you may call Heisenberg relation. And they, finally, I, because there are so many relations and some of them are valid, some of them are not valid. So I want to give some unified view of all the uncertainty relations, okay? And those are references, but anyway, um, from this, you can see that this is a rather personal view of this subject. So I'm first start with a, a very elementary aspect of quantum mechanics, namely uh, volume probability interpretation. Namely, uh, if you have an operator, then that probability will be trace formula. And from this, you can generally see that the uh, standard deviation is not zero in general. And uh, therefore, this is called uh, not dispersion-free. Dispersion-free means you can define everything without any fluctuation. Therefore, this is zero. That's the classical mechanics. Therefore, in the classical mechanics, 
we have no uncertainty relation. And in fact, first I'm going to explain that the, uh, this one combined with the uh, commutator algebra give rise to the, all the properties of uncertainty relations. And therefore, <coughs> uh, as long as you handle this kind of object, then you know, Heisenberg type uh, measurement error or uh, textbook uncertainty relations uh, all, all come from the same property, only this. This is the essence. Therefore, in the classical theory, no uncertainty relation. In quantum mechanics, we have uncertainty relation. <coughs> and therefore, that's the reason why I argue that you know, everything is uh, unified, treated. And so I start with a you know, very uh, historical thing. So Heisenberg, as is well known, in 27, uh, he discussed the uh, so-called Gedanke experiment. So he argued that, for example, if we want to measure the uh, position of electron, for example, by X-ray, then electron picks up the um, non-vanishing momentum as a recoil. So this is defined as an error, epsilon. And this is defined as a uh, disturbance, usually you do eta. Okay? In the literature, people often use epsilon and eta. And therefore, this is an error disturbance relation. Okay. It's a famous one. And this is what Heisenberg said. <coughs> then, uh, the, uh, immediately after uh, Kennard and Robertson, Robertson is famous for the Robertson Walker metric. <coughs> anyway, they, they start with uh, uh, essentially this kind of operator algebra for Hamishan operators. And then, as is, uh, every textbook explains you, uh, you consider the absolute scale. So this is uh, non-negative. Therefore, discriminant uh, can be positive or negative with that kind of you know, uh, quadratic form. You can get uh, this. And here, sigma is a standard deviation, okay, this way. And the usual interpretation of this one is that, you know, the, uh, uh, this sigma a, sigma b means, for example, you first measure operator a, okay? You uh, prepare many similarly prepared samples, so and you measure a up one after another, only a, and you evaluate standard deviation. Then next, you measure only b, and uh, again, same sample, and you evaluate sigma b. Then that satisfies this. So this is a, a, a rather standard uh, interpretation. So in this way, uh, this is rather different from Heisenberg's original idea because their uh, the measurement and, you know, disturbance is very essential. Here, nothing appears. And uh, so for this reason, uh, for example, uh, people at Vienna uh, uh, Claim that you know, the, uh, Heisenberg type is incorrect, but uh, Kennard and Robertson type may be correct. But, uh, may be correct. But I'm going to explain that actually uh, they are same. And then another interesting idea of the uh, uncertainty is the answers and Kelly, 65. And this one may not be so familiar. Not everybody knows uh, uh, compared to the you know, previous two examples. And uh, in their case, uh, we have again two observables, A and B, and we introduce apparatus, M and N. Therefore, to measure A, we need, actually, when we say we measure A, means we don't uh, measure A itself, but actually we are looking at the, uh, um, the apparatus. Right? If we measure B, you introduce apparatus N. Therefore, when you have two operators, we have actually four operators. And the important point is that uh, M and N are seem to be commuting. This is the essence of this idea. And namely, if you transfer information from A to M, B to N, if A and B are non-commuting, so if M and N are commu non-commuting, then you have not achieved much, right? So assumption is that the M and N are now commuting. And of course, this cannot be precise. Therefore, if you look at M and N only, 
then you find the lower bound is slightly bigger than the one half. And that is a result of this, OK? And also, the, uh, in this case, another important assumption comes in, that's unbiased measurement, or unbiased disturbance. Unbiased means we look at M to measure A. Therefore, we have to assume that the information of A is transferred successfully to the uh, apparatus M. M is the output of the, uh, uh, the uh, this is the initial value. After measurement, this contains information of A. That is, that's a successful measurement by definition, okay? So for the uh, system psi. And uh, uh, this is a system web function. This is an apparatus uh, the, uh, state vector. So important point is that in this case, measurement is a unitary time development. And we often, uh, in the lecture, we say measurement is a non-unitary. Right? And Schrodinger equation is unitary, but measurement is a non-unitary. But that's not the case. Uh, everything is unitary. Okay. Therefore, for example, M out is a starting initial. We have the unitary. This U is a you know, uh, uh, measurement interaction. So that, that depends on all the variables. After the measurement, we have M out. We measure it. We assume that the, that one carries the, uh, this information in this sense. Because of M out and A, you know, in some sense, can be operator sense equal. Although initially M out on only this one, A out only psi. But because of uh, unitary transformation, after the measurement, M act on everything, OK, here and here. Therefore, precise measurement means this is equal to A in the operator sense. But uh, this is a slightly weaker assumption, unbiased measurement. Okay? And uh, see the uh, Heisen. And uh, important, we work in the Heisenberg picture, so called. This is the essence. And uh, <coughs> anyway, so uh, this is slightly uh, the, uh, new way of doing that. This is a rather standard way of analysis in the so-called uh, observation theory. Or like and not, maybe not everybody knows this one. And uh, the, as for the, uh, the faithful measurement, faithful face means say, unbiased. So unbiased means the, if you have some the, uh, op, the, uh, value, Sometimes your operator comes to this side, sometimes this side. Right? But on the average, we come to the correct one. That's unbiased measurement. And that one is assumed that it hold. This one hold for any state of the system. This is a very strong assumption. And this assumption means, for example, uh, this one is also zero. Because without A, this zero is an unbiased measurement. But uh, you have any initial state, uh, initial system variable, A and B or so on. If, even if you have this one, still zero. And uh, the reason is this. Uh, this, is, uh, you know, uh, this average zero is an uh, unbiased measurement. And uh, we call the system variable B. Then uh, this one looks like the, this one looks like something like this not quite a diagonal. But you can formulate this one, everything diagonal. Okay. Therefore, this one is zero. This capital A is zero. Capital A is zero for any diagonal means this right hand side is zero. Right? Because everything is diagonal now. Therefore, uh, this zero means this kind of one also zero. This is very technical, but very important in our analysis later on. Then, for example, you may start with a uh, Robertson's relation. Robertson's relation means for any Hamishan operator, this should hold. Right? And we are working with a Heisenberg picture, so state vector is fixed. So this operator is, uh, again, Hamishan, unitary developed one. So this is Hamishan, so this must hold. But if you look at the right-hand side, uh, first of all, we assume that the M and N are commuting. Therefore, unitary development means this also after measurement of commuting. 
So you can go to the, uh, anyhow, this is here. Uh, maybe pointer is a better. Do you have any physical, you know, one? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, uh, from this one, okay. M and N are commuting. You can, you can, uh, yeah, this is formulation that's the, first of you have the, this line. Uh, from the first to second line is, uh, uh, I use that uh, A times N, uh, from here to here means B times this one is zero. That's an unbiased condition, as I explained in the previous transparency. And because M and N are commuting, you can come here. But you can, this is equal to this one. And this one is again unbiased condition A, zero. So essentially A and B. Therefore, from this Robertson relation combined with the unbiased measurement means this one. So this is very much like the uh, Heisenberg uncertainty already, OK? And in fact, there are several ways to formulate Heisenberg relation. This is a Heisenberg error-error relation. And uh, we define error as a, you know, the, this is a operate, the uh, system operator, this is a measurement, after measurement. This square and average is defined as an error, because if this is very small, then this one is a, carries the actual information, this one, OK? And this one is a bigger than this. This is a standard deviation. Therefore, uh, error is always bigger than standard deviation. Therefore, you can rewrite the previous relation by this way. Error, error is bigger than one half. Okay. Therefore, A is measurement error, B is measurement error, is bigger than this one. This is called uh, Heisenberg error error and relation. <laughs> and now I, I come back to the uh, Arthur's Kelly relation, okay? Because I have not finished that explanation. Uh, for example, m out is a m out minus a plus a, m plus a, okay? Therefore, if you take a square of it, then square, square, and cross term. But the cross term go to the zero because of unbiased measurement, okay? Therefore, as you can explain, uh, expect, this one standard deviation is equal to standard deviation, standard deviation. And the same thing for the other variable. Therefore, Arthur's Kelly relation means we look at only the operate as the measurement. <coughs> And uh, this one is uh, this one, this term. But as I expect, the uh, standard Robertson relation says uh, this and this times uh, is uh, bigger than something, OK? And uh, I explain that this one and this one multiplied bigger than, again, same object. Therefore, you can write down this one as the inverse of this one. This one is the inverse of this one. And if you take uh, calculate this one, this is uh, bigger than 4. Therefore, uh, this one. Therefore, you get this one. So this is a. Uh, uh, so called Arthur's Kelly relation. And the important point is that we look at only the uh, apparatus. We don't look at the, uh, the object itself. And also here, not one half, but one. And uh, this extra one half comes essentially the, uh, uh, we have transferred the uh, uh, information of the non commuting variables to commuting variables. So there are certain extra error comes in. So this is called Arthur's Kelly relation. And this is a standard one. And then the, uh, Mr. Ozawa uh, proposed that, you know, the, his derivation, there are, I will give you a different derivation later on, but his derivations are, uh, start with uh, this identity. You can show that this identity. And this is a zero, as I said. And if you apply the, this is zero means uh, Average value is a complex number, so two-dimensional uh, quantities. Uh, so if you apply the triangle inequality, then this one absolute value, this absolute value, this absolute value is bigger than this one. We have four terms. Some of them is zero. So this one is uh, smaller than the sum of three. And uh, from this, and uh, if you use the definition of the uh, error, okay, and uh, disturbance of similar definition, but I'll come back to later on. Okay. But anyway, Mr. Ozawa also derived from this one, this kind of relation. And then he observed that the, uh, if you drop these two, then you come back to the uh, Heisenberg one. Therefore, here, the uh, standard deviation is error is defined this one. This is bigger than this. And uh, disturbance means this is the initial value, final value, bigger than the standard deviation. 
therefore, or if you use this one, you get this one. And uh, Ozawa proposed this is a Heisenberg one. But uh, because this one is uh, you throw away two terms, so not always valid. And in fact, uh, experiment of Vienna uh, confirms that this relation fails. Okay. Namely, when you take A as a spin, X, X component spin, B as a Y component spin, and the initial uh, state variable is a spin pointing the Z direction. Then this one fails. That's what they show. And th there are many ways to see it, but the intuitive way to see that uh, this is a uh, the, uh, you know, uh, error disturbance relation, which those people tested. But uh, if you go to this go to zero, means uh, that's a precise measurement. Then, because this is a spin system, therefore this is a bounded operator. So we cannot go to infinity. So this go to zero, independent of this one. So this is more or less bound to fail, you can expect. Right? And in fact, that's what they found. But this one is OK, because this is come from the you know, identity. Anyway, therefore, uh, other words, relation is so in that sense, it's nice, but uh, you have three terms, and the uh, meaning is not uh, quite clear. So my suggestion is that uh, to rewrite the other word one in this form, then we have only two. And uh, this is rather easy to memorize, because uh, naive one is the epsilon and the eta. Just uh, add the standard deviation. And then becomes one half, instead of one half, we have one, this one. Then this is always valid. And uh, this one is very close to the, uh, this uh, Arthur's Kelly relation I mentioned. Okay. Arthur's Kelly, again, you know, you had the uh, unit. But the difference is that in their case, the, uh, this one is the square root of this one, some of it takes square root. This one means you take square root each time first. Therefore, this is a weaker because this one is bigger than the, you know, sum of it square root is actually smaller than this. Therefore, oh, this is, a, uh, in a sense, weaker than the uh, Arthur's Kelly one. Therefore, always safe one. And the Arthur's Kelly relation, I, I will explain that rather boundary, namely a dangerous point and a safe point. Okay. This is a slightly safer one. But anyway, so my suggestion is that uh, if this one fails, and uh, this one they say, oh, OK, but this contains too many terms and uh, not so clear. So this is easier to memorize. And uh, you might say this is uh, you know, inaccuracy, this is a fluctuation. Then this is always safe. Namely, as far as the quantum mechanics is OK, this is valid. So this one is approved with the, you know, uh, Kennard Robertson time one. And also natural for the uh, very broad state, if you made a very accurate way. Accurate measurement means this is zero, means this is equal one, means uh, standard deviation of M out is uh, equal to the uh, system's st uh, standard deviation. That's a precise measurement. Therefore, even if you measure precisely, still your measurement device contains this error or fluctuation. And that is. Uh, Included here. So, in that sense, this is a lot natural. That's my argument. Okay. Anyway, so also the uh, improves modified answers Kelly. Modified answers Kelly means answers Kelly means that's a, in a sense simultaneous measurement. They use A to M used for N A, N used for B. But uh, in, this, uh, in this case, we don't use a uh, uh, N operator, just a disturbance one. So this is a generalization of error disturbance relation, epsilon eta, OK? But you can write down the analog of the Arthur's K relation for the uh, error disturbance. And that is, uh, the, uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, the uh, measurement error. This is a disturbance. And then again, you can derive this relation. And as I explained, uh, this, my definition is bigger than this. Therefore. This is a safer. This is a rather close to the lower bound. And in fact, if you compare with the experimental uh, if you compare with the uh, 
experimental uh, yeah, experimental uh, data, then uh, the, uh, this is data and this is rather than uh, uh, this is my proposal one, and that essentially again equivalent to Ozawa's one, but anyway already satisfied. And this is a uh, you know uh, Arthur's Kelly type modified version. Error disturbance one comes below. That means this fails, this satisfies. Therefore, uncertainty is a very subtle thing. You know. If you make the better and better one, this is in a sense better, closer to the lower bound, but fails, goes below the lower bound. This is a safer one, but rather away from the lower bound. Anyway, so uh, that is uh, the. Uh, I explained there are many versions and some of them are broken. Okay. So uh, I now give rise to some unified view, all uncertain relations. So I'm going to first explain all uncertain relations are from Robertson relations, first of all. And secondly, I'm going to explain that the unbiased condition, that's what Arthur Kelly and many people assume. Okay. That is generally algebraically inconsistent without referring to uncertainty relation. Okay? That's what I'm going to explain. So I have about 10 minutes or so. Yeah. So rather technical one. Okay? But anyway, start with, the, for example, Robertson. Okay? Again, this is a you know, measurement. This is a disturbance size. This should hold. That's a Robertson relation. And for the right-hand side, uh, if you assume this one, this is a, you know, this means measurement device and system are dynamically independent and the unitary development. This goes there. Then, on the right hand side, we have four terms. But uh, if you use this one, we have three terms. So, this is a Robertson's relation. Okay. Up to here, the Robertson's relation. But uh, if you use the, uh, you take absolute value, then, of course, we take some of the minus. Therefore, this is, a, this is a bigger than this one. So, we have Two terms, you can move to this two terms to the left hand side. Then you get three terms on the left hand side. And also, the, uh, if you use a, a, the uh, unbiased condition, means this is zero. This is zero, as I explained. Therefore, this is zero. I say only this survives. Therefore, the, uh, let me see. Uh, this is the one, okay. Unbiased condition, they will get this one. And if we don't assume unbiased one, but we, we had three terms on the left hand side, but for each term, you can again apply Robertson's relation. Then you have three terms on the left hand side. If you add another Robertson relation, you come to here. And this is essentially identical to Ozawa's proposal. This is my variation of Ozawa's one. Just to factorize it. Okay. Therefore, from this, you can see that you know, the, uh, and the unbiased one, this one. Therefore, all the known uncertainty relations are derived from the uh, Robertson's relations, first of all. And in some of them, we make assumptions. In some of them, we make different assumptions. So we move to the safer direction, and this is a rather dangerous direction, because we throw away. And one technical thing I want to emphasize here is that, the, for example, this one in the Robertson relation originally defined as an average of this one for the state in the Heisenberg picture, independent of the measurement of A. But when we rewrote this one is replaced this one, we understand this one as a disturbance called a measurement of A. And why this is possible is that uh, we are assuming the uh, unitary time development and the Heisenberg picture. Therefore, if you measure A, then that interaction Hamiltonian also influences time development B. Therefore, B contains the information of measurement A. Okay. So this is a trick. Okay. So by this way, we can transfer Robertson's relation, which appears to have no measurement process, in fact, can describe measurement. Okay because we can come here. So these are all what they say. So the, uh, from the Robertson relations, therefore, we have I have derived that the 
two universal ones. This is the Ozawa's version. This is my version. And if you assume the, uh, the uh, uh, unbiased condition, you get the error, uh, error disturbance relation. And this one fails. These two are safe. Okay. And then if you do the same thing for the simultaneous measurement type argument, then you get Arthur's Kelly. This again conditionally valid. Conditionally means you have to assume unbiasedness condition or conditionally valid error error relation. And I'm going to briefly explain that these two are assumed, expect to be rather safe, but this fails. And these are, of course, safe as, far, as long as quantum mechanics is valid. Okay. So, what I did is that all the answers relations from Robertson relations. And also, all the universal divided relations in terms of eta and epsilon are secondary consequences of Robertson's relations. And the saturation of Robertson relations is a necessary saturation of uh, universally valid one, like Ozawa's one. Okay. Therefore, Robertson relations are most accurate. Now comes the algebraic inconsistency, namely algebraic the unbiasedness condition like this. And we have the uh, system state vector, apparatus state vector, okay? And these are the unitary time development. And that kind of thing, okay? That's a technical thing. Then if you assume precise measurement, this is zero. Means this is zero. But this is the square of the you know, absolute value. This is zero. And uh, therefore, the, uh, this is for arbitrary, OK? And therefore, the, if you assume that the m and n equals 0, so I'm going to use this information later, OK? If you assume m and n are commuting, then unitary time divided to this one is 0. And uh, starting with this one, you can start with this one and uh, use this relation. M is replaced by A. And you can do, again, you know, N with N minus B plus B. And this is because unbiasedness condition zero. You get this. So we use this one, okay? So from this one, we get this one. This means A and B is commutator is equal to this, but this is zero. But this is a contradiction because uh, this is not equal to zero. So this shows that the, uh, the uh, precise measurement of A does not allow the unbiased measurement B. If all the operators are well defined, we assume all the operators are well defined. And similarly, you can do this, okay? You can do the exact same argument. Then AB is equal to this one, this is zero. Okay? And B out is again starting with this one, unitary time development. And system and measurement device are independent. So we need to have this one again. As uh, that you know, the uh, precise measurement under the precise measurement, uh, the uh, uh, unbiased disturbance means uh, this one cannot be unbiased disturbance cannot be de defined if all operators are well defined again. So implication of this analysis is this: uh, Heisenberg error error relation like this one, and this is and Arthur's Kelly. Arthur's Kelly is based on this one. Therefore, these two always come together. Okay? One fails, then the other fails. And these two are expected to be valid as a conditionally valid relation, namely unbiased condition. And the reason is that the n out can become singular. Even if you measure spin, your measurement device, if you impose unbiasedness condition, then that measurement becomes the infinite dimensional. Because you know, even if you measure only spin, unbiased condition are very strong constraint. Therefore, the, uh, that's what the numerical simulation suggests. Okay? Therefore, based on this, I and also therefore I suspect I, I expect that the n out becomes a singular. And because of it, the, uh, even if this goes to zero, precise measurement, this can go to infinity. And therefore, this can be satisfied. Therefore, this is satisfied also. In contrast, in the Heisenberg error disturbance relation, is that we have the bounded operators. Therefore, it's impossible to argue that you know, bounded operators go to infinity. Therefore, this one fails for them go to zero. 
and this what the Vienna experiment uh, uh, shows. Okay. So the, uh, that's the, uh, what I have. So now I summarized. Okay. Uh, we have shown that all the uncertain deviations in terms of epsilon and eta, L and eta are derived from Robertson deviations. Of course, you can write down uncertain deviations from different quantities uh, other than epsilon or eta. Then you could get a different uncertain deviation. But as long as you write it, essentially everything comes from Robertson deviation. Okay? Also, we have shown that the joint unbiased measurement or unbiased measurement and unbiased disturbance are algebraically inconsistent, independent uncertain deviations. Therefore, the, those uncertain deviations based on uh, unbiasedness condition uh, very much depends on the experimental situation. Okay? And uh, so, my final. Uh, my understanding or my principle is that uh, uncertain relations should be simple, therefore fundamental. Of course, you can define you know, very, very elaborate or complicated uncertain relations, nothing wrong with it. But uh, that becomes more and more complicated. But uh, uncertain relation means, uh, as we understand, every undergraduate student can understand it. That means very, very fundamental. So we want to retain this one. And uh, the, uh, my analysis, and in particular this viewpoint, Robertson relation, everything may be rather simple, and therefore show that the uh, Heisenberg relation or idea is basically correct, and also we have the minor modification. We can retain everything, and we can understand the uh, experiment at uh, Vienna also. So finally, I just mention if there may be some students here. Uh, at the classroom, we usually teach that the delta P delta X bigger than one half. But if you have the periodic boundary condition, the box, then actually uncertain relation modified to this way. The reason is that the, if you have the periodic boundary condition inside the box, means you can choose a discrete momentum space. That therefore dispersion can be zero. You are in the box, this is finite. So left hand side go to zero. But for that situation, right hand side also go to zero. So this is valid. Okay. And the basic idea of this Robertson's relation and answer is again very similar to this kind of idea. Okay. Namely, in some situation, uh, we let the uh, lower bound also go to zero to save the uncertainty relation. Okay. If you stick to one half, then in this situation, this fails. But if you take this idea, and this can be derived in a very elementary way, just partial integration <coughs> by this one. So by this way, you can write down universally valid relation. And uh, the uh, Robertson's relation and the universal uncertainty is more or less that idea. Okay.